In today's video, I want to show you how you can take data from data frames and send it to an LLM for analysis using R. And the cool thing is that you don't even need to pay for stuff like ChatGPT or Perplexity or Claude. Instead, we will use local LLMs that are for free. And to do that, we'll use the mole package Olama and local LLMs that we get from Olama. So let's dive in. To start off, we have to install a couple of things. First, we're going to install the mole package, which is pretty easy, which we can just do using the install packages command. Then we're also going to have to install the Olama package, which is a bit trickier because we first have to download it from their website. You can head to their website and then click on the big download button. I'm using Linux, so that's why it's shown here, but you can also use Windows or Mac OS. Just choose what works for you. Once you've installed the Olama tool, you also want to make sure that it's running in your background. Since I'm using Ubuntu, I can check this easily by going into the terminal inside of my RStudio window and running the Olama command to see if it is running. And there I could also use the Olama list command to check out all of the large language models I've already downloaded. Now that we have everything set up, we can download a local model with help from the Olama R package. That way we can work from within R instead of having to use the Olama interface. You see with the mall package, we also installed the Olama R package, which you can use to pull large language models. It's really easy. All you have to do is to throw in a string of the name of the large language model. To get an idea of all the models you can use, you can head to the Olama website and click on models. And there you see all the things that you can use. Here, let's just go with a Llama 3.2 model. All we have to do is to throw in Llama 3.2 in here, and then it will be downloaded. Depending on how large your model is, it will take a while until you see the results here. So just be patient in case it takes a while. Finally, the last step to set everything up is to make sure that the mall package uses the local LLM that you've just downloaded. All we have to do is to first call the mall package and then use the LLM use function to tell mall to use as the backend Olama and also use the specific model we've just downloaded. And if you execute this, you'll see that here we now have a mall session object. Also inside of this LLM use function, you can modify parameters that you might want to use. Everything you throw into these dots here will be passed to the LLM and this can be helpful when using parameters like the seed and the temperature. Don't worry for now if you don't know what these things mean, just know that you can specify model parameters in case you know what they mean. And also your session will then reflect the choices you've made. Nice, now we have set up everything and now we can take data and send it to an LLM and let's just start with a sentiment analysis. Here let me just throw in a little code chunk that generates a small tibble, basically a nice data frame here. So all we have here is a couple of IDs and a few adjectives that are sometimes quite negative or in other times they are quite positive. We could pass this data to our LLM and ask it whether these adjectives are positive, negative or neutral. This is called a sentiment analysis. And with the mall package, it's really easy to do. All you have to do is take this data frame and then pass it to the LLM function or rather to one of the LLM function. And here we want to use the LLM sentiment function. And inside the documentation of this function, you see that the options already are positive, negative, neutral. So you don't have to change them. But if you wanted to, you could. So now if we run this, we see that we have an error. And if we look into the documentation again, we see that there is also a call argument, which is, of course, the column that we want to apply our LLM on. So we have to specify that the column we want to use is the adjective here. And once we do that, we see that our calculation is running. It took a bit and now we have the results here. So the LLM detected here that painful is probably negative, hungry is also negative, cheerful is positive and exciting is also a positive thing. But that was pretty straightforward. Let's go for a bit more complicated example. Let's just create a new code chunk and in there let's throw in a new data set. Let's just throw this in here. This is a data set that just has five fruits in there. And now it might be interesting to find out whether an LLM can match colors to these fruits here. So let's take our data and pass it to one of the LLM functions. And here what could be useful is the LLM classify function that allows us to classify fruits into particular colors. So just like
like before, we specify that we want to target a particular column. Here it is the fruit column. And then if we look into the documentation, we see that we need to specify the labels. All right, so let's do that. Here, let's just go with the colors red, green, blue, and yellow. And now if we run this, then we see that we don't get particularly nice results. For apple and banana, we didn't even get a value back. That's not particularly nice. And I think that a banana is a clear cut example of a yellow thing, but I guess our LLM here was not powerful enough for that. So what we could do instead is to just change the model here. For example, we could use a Llama 3.1 model, which has more parameters than the small Llama 3.2 models. They come in sizes 1 billion and 3 billion model parameters. The Llama 3.1 comes in sizes of 8 billion, 70 billion and 405 billion parameters. Just know the larger the model is that you try to run, the more resources your computer needs to have. So here let's just test if a Llama 3.1 model with 8 billion parameters will get the job done. So if you click on the model, you'll see that here is the model specification. So let's just throw this in here. It's just the model name Llama 3.1 followed by a colon followed by the amount of parameters. So if we execute this, we now have a new mall session and now we can use our larger model to check if the results are better. And indeed the results got better. We now have classified the banana as yellow. That's something I'd expect. Also the reason that I could run this command is because I've already ran the Olama pull command to download this model here. So you might be wondering, okay, what's the difference between a sentiment and a classification? It's kind of the same. And you're absolutely right. You could think of a sentiment as a specific classification. And here I also want to show you what happens behind the scenes when you call these commands here. Hopefully this will give you a better intuition of what happens when you run a command like LLM classify or LLM sentiment. So let's just take a look at the source code of LLM sentiment. If you take a look at the source code, you see that it just uses a LLM sentiment method. This means that depending on what data you put into it, there might be some different behavior. And the way to check these kind of things is to go into the internal mall functions using three colons and then throwing in the LLM sentiment function and then checking what kind of functions are there. And you see here's one for data frame and here's one for Spark. So you might expect a different function behavior from a Spark table that you put into it. Here we're using a data frame. So let's just look into the documentation here. So if you look into this function, you'll see that the data from the function argument is just sticked into mutate and the LLM vec sentiment function is called. All right, so let's check what happens there. In here, there's just another function that is called. So let's check out what that one does. And here things get a little bit more complicated, but really we are interested in the very easy case when no prompt is specified, when Mall should just do figure things out on its own. So let's check out what is inside of this m backend prompt function. And once again, it is a use method. So once again, we should check out the internal functions. Let's check out what we have here. We have Mall Llama 3.2 and we have Mall Session. Let's check out the Mall Session. And then here, this backend is really nothing but a list. It just returns a list. And in this list, you have specific specific options for different LLM functions. If you call LLM sentiment, you will use these options. If you use LLM summarize, you'll use these options. And if you look into this, you'll see that really this is just a simple prompt that happens in the content field here. In case of sentiment, it says you are a helpful sentiment engine. Then, then options are inserted. The prompt also says no capitalizations, no explanations. Then additional infos are added. And then the answer is based on the following text. And here is where the data is inserted. So really this sentiment analysis using LLMs is just throwing your data into a prompt, doing that programmatically with the glue function, and then it's passed to the LLM to do its thing. And the same thing happens with the classification. The only real difference is here that it says you are a helpful classification engine instead of you are a helpful sentiment engine. But all the other stuff is just the same thing. So at the end, using LLMs with the mall package really does nothing more than enrich your prompts with data using functions like glue and paste to, to first assemble a prompt with your data and then throw that to the LLM. So I hope this gave you a nice idea of how to use AI with your data. Definitely check out the other examples from the mall documentation. If you enjoyed this video, then I'm sure that you're also going to enjoy the other videos from my AI series. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to get all the new videos from that series. And with that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.